Alright guys, welcome back. Today we are going to look at the High Command module and some of its benefits and limitations. So before we actually look at High Command, I'll demonstrate why High Command is really valuable. If you look down at the bottom left of my screen, you'll see a whole mess of icons from the group that I have command over. All of these units you can see, I have command over. And while... well, let's tab to the next page. I have... 16 units, and I have to tab back and forth between pages to get all of them. Now, I've got a benefit for myself because I use high command, so I can put them all in their own uh, little groups, so I can put the, the vehicles in their own group, and I can put each of the teams in their own group, and then I can have my medic run with me. So I'll do that real quick just to demonstrate. One. Four. Nine. Assign Team Red. One. Four. Nine. Team Red. Two. Five. Ten. Assign Team Blue. Two. Five. Ten. Team Blue. Team Red. Team Red. Move two hundred meters left. Team Blue. Move two hundred meters left. Six. Eight. Eleven. Fourteen. Assign Team Green. Six. Eight. Eleven. Fourteen. Team Green. Team Green. Standing by. Team Green. Move seventy-five meters. Front. Roger. Standing by. Seven. Twelve. Thirteen. Sixteen. Assign Team Yellow. Seven. Twelve. Thirteen. Sixteen. Team Yellow. Waiting. Team Yellow. Team Yellow, move 100 meters left. On the way. And 15 is my medic, and he'll stay with me. So, 15. Regroup. 15, return to formation. Copy that. Now I have all of these guys separated into four different teams, and I can give them individual commands, which is really cool. However... I have to assign their targets individually. While they will pick up targets, they will not pick up targets efficiently. The team leaders won't give commands to their teams. Uh, I basically have to micromanage all of these teams along with both of the vehicles. Uh, and one of the cool things, obviously, I can get the teams to get in the vehicles so we can move faster. So, Team Yellow. Team Yellow, board that vehicle. Team Green. Copy. Team Green, board that vehicle. Roger. However, if I use High Command, and I put these guys in their own High Command teams, what'll happen is I can still give them commands, or Standing I can by. give them movement orders, but when I give them movement orders, the team leaders will be the ones to make the decisions Ready. on their, their modes, and their their combat situation and when they should take cover and they'll assign targets which is extremely beneficial however when you do that the problem is transport over long range it's really hard to get a high command team to get into a vehicle so what I personally prefer to do is putting the vehicles under my high command and then having all of my infantry units under my personal command but we'll look at both methods of doing it and how high command can be a limitation for moving across large areas with groups of infantry. So let's get to it. Let's check out how to get high command working. So as you can see, all of these units are directly connected to my unit right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the fire teams and the vehicles, and I'm going to give them to myself under high command instead of direct command. So let's go ahead and put the vehicles down here. And I'm going to make four groups. I'm going to make each vehicle its own group under high command, and then I'm going to make each fire team its own group under high command. Alright, now the two modules we're looking at today are High Command. High Command, Commander, and Subordinate. Kind of like the support modules. Oh, 
and for some reason they're the default modules. So we're looking at Commander, which is me. So I'll put the High Command Commander module down, and I'll link it to my character. And F5 is the Sync tool. And then I'm going to put the High Command Subordinate module down. And ungroup it with the Commander module, but then sync it to the Commander module. Now, the Commander module is synced to my guy. The Subordinate module is synced to the Commander module. Now I sync all of the subordinate units to the subordinate module. So I want each of these teams, as well as each of these vehicles, to be subordinates under my high command. And that's pretty much it. That's If all you were looking for out of this video was how to get modules down under the high command and how to use it properly, you can pretty much stop watching now. All you have to do to go into high command mode is hit control space bar when you're in game. Uh, but if you want to see more, then continue watching because there's a lot more to go over. So now, as you can see, the only guy under my command is my medic. The vehicles and the two fire teams, in order to get command of them, I have to hit control space bar. Now you can see we've got a little bit of a different interface than we're used to. I've got all of the units down in their groups where my groups would usually go. And I've got the, the armored unit, the mechanized infantry, and then the two fire teams. And these all use proper NATO symbols. Let's see. You can see right here, it's the, the blue X, which means infantry, and the one dot, which means it's a fire team size element. And they do the dot will switch according to how big the element is. If I put it up to a squad, it'll be two dots. If I put it up to a platoon, it'll be three dots. If I put a whole company worth of infantry down, it'll be one line, one solid line. So, now I have commanded these guys, and I can still give them waypoints, but now as they move to their waypoints, they'll decide a lot of stuff on their own. They'll assign themselves targets and combat modes and whatnot. Uh, and I can still use voice commands. One. Two. And instead of giving them waypoints directly, you can give them waypoints on the map. And you see we're on this hillside, and that's the road that we're facing. And you can see their waypoints as well. So you can also select them using the click and drag on the map. And this is really the gameplay type that Arma is all about. The Arma is meant to be using high command. Uh, that's the real cool thing to be doing in Arma. So what I'll do is I'll give my, what is it, it's a panther. It's right there. I'm gonna give him a waypoint up to that T intersection, but then I'm going to modify his waypoint. So let's click him, give him a waypoint up there, and then right click the waypoint, and you'll. Oops, what's going on? Oh, I have to use. So you can see I get, when I right click the waypoint, you can't actually click it, you have to use the corresponding key. So waypoint type, I'll put him in a seek and destroy as a waypoint type. Now what we should see is once he gets to the waypoint, he starts seeking. Like he'll go and move around the waypoint looking for enemies. And once he's done that for a little while, I think he'll stop, but I'm not positive. And that's actually how you get infantry into vehicles in this. So I'll give this group a waypoint here, and then I'll modify it, and type is going to be get in, so 7, and they're going to run up and they're going to get in that vehicle. Now that's, that's how you can get infantry moving long distances in high command, but if there's more than one vehicle nearby, it's really tough. And as you can see, it doesn't even matter because they're not getting them. Anyways. So let's see if we can figure out a way to get them in properly.
Well, my issues with this is just demonstrating what I was talking about earlier and how hard it is to use high command to get infantry units to move long distances because what you ideally want is to be able to put your guys in vehicles and have them move over long distances. And that's why when I'm doing stuff like this, what I'll do is I'll keep all of the infantry units in my group and I'll micromanage all of them, but then I'll have vehicles or aircraft under high command for transport purposes. So that's a quick glance at the kind of stuff I can do with high command. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of the infantry guys back into my squad and I'm going to use the vehicles along with a transport chopper to move a long distance. And I'm going to drop a ghost hawk and ungroup it and then sync it with the high command module the subordinate high command module. So now, when I go back in the game, all of these guys are going to be back under my direct command, but these three vehicles are going to be under my high command. Now, when you're using the supports module for transport, if you guys have used it before, you'll notice that the helicopter won't always land properly. Uh, what I prefer to do, instead of using the supports transport module, is I prefer to put a helicopter directly under my high command. That makes it so you can give the helicopter orders better. And the trick to doing this is telling the helicopter to move to a position near you, and then telling your guys to get in the helicopter. And what that will do is that will have the pilot recognize that there are infantry trying to get in and he'll land somewhere nearby. So let's get him to move off a little bit. And then I'll give him a waypoint to come back near us and then I'll give my squad a command to get in. And he should land. Now I haven't tried this since Arma 2. So let's see if it works. And the first thing I'll do is I'll put my guys in their proper teams. Now I'm going to bring the chopper back and tell my give my guy or tell my squad to move in or to get in, and we'll see if the chopper lands and my guys can get in. And remember, control space bar is the button you hit to bring up high. Ready. So the chopper is three. Let's give him a, a waypoint right over here in the middle of this field, and he should start moving. And when he gets close, I'm going to give my squad. I'm just going to select my whole squad, and the default when you're looking at a transport vehicle is for you guys to get in. So, that's close enough to tell them to get in. Two, three, four, five, six, and as seven, soon as eight, I told them to nine, get in, it looked like he vehicle. started trying to land properly. Oh, and this thing actually won't hold all of my guys, so... You can only hold eight passers. I guess that's why the default squad size is eight. So let's give the helicopter a movement waypoint over there. And I'll bring my last guy with me. And take a ride to Marshall. Got me. Now, the way to get your guys out at a designated waypoint. Let's see where are we? Switch over to high command. It'll show me where my units are. I'll give them a disembark waypoint over Two, here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Dismount. And what that'll do is that'll force the chopper to land and let them out. Now I can give my helicopter a waypoint to move out, go away, and I'll take a ride in the marshal and link up with my guys. So that brought me 
straight to where I wanted to go. I didn't think I was that accurate. I'm gonna get 10 to dismount. 10, dismount. Understood. Standing by. Squad. Regroup. Fall back. Copy that. Team Red. Team Red, move 100 meters. Front. On the way. Team Blue. Team Blue, move 200 meters. Front. Roger. One. Two. Three. Also, you can hold control down and give waypoints, just like for UAVs. So I'll have the helicopter that I have control of go into a uh, patrol. So what I've done is I've given him four waypoints, and the fifth, I've given him five, but the fifth is cycle. So what should happen is once he hits that fifth waypoint, it'll recreate the first four, and he'll continue going in a circle. One of my teams have moved out to this compound like I instructed. The other one should be on their way up to a hill that I saw. And both of my armored vehicles are on our flanks, and the helicopter is doing a patrol. So, that's a quick demonstration, quote-unquote quick demonstration, of the kind of stuff we can do with High Command. Uh, the last thing that I'm going to demonstrate is the giant amount of units that you can control under High Command. This is just a, like a squad, a reinforced squad size amount of units with a lot of capabilities. But High Command is really meant for controlling large, large forces. I'm talking about battalion size forces. So let's go back and check out how big of a force we can get under high command. So I've got a full tank company, a full infantry platoon, de depending on what you consider to be an infantry platoon. I've got my own reinforced squad, and I've got two Blackfoots. Is there anything else I need? I think you're starting to get the idea, but I could keep going and keep going and keep going until I've got this screen full of stuff. But we'll just check this out for now. So there's my Comanches. There's my one, two, three tank platoons. And there are my three rifle squads. So let's start giving these guys orders. Let's see. Let's take some of these points around here. I'll get my rifle squads to take that building, that building, and that building. And I'll get the tank platoons to take the road, where the road curves up there, and then the T-intersection here, and then the T-intersection here. And then I'll put my Comanches on patrol around this. And there's a lot of more stuff you can you can do with these waypoints. You can right-click the waypoint, and you've got a whole list of stuff Enemy you can spot. see over on the left. Uh, you've got type combat mode, formation, speed, timeout, meaning they'll wait at that waypoint for a certain amount of time before moving to the next one. Uh, wait until... I don't know what that does. Wait until... Oh, it gives a specific in-game time to wait until. That's pretty cool. Create task. That doesn't do anything. I guess that's something scripted. You can obviously cancel the waypoint, and that's about it. So let's take a look at the progress all of my forces are making. You can see one of our tank platoons over there, and I told one of them to move up there. I told one of them to move just a little bit. And if these guys were in combat, they'd actually be doing something, but since they're not, they just move to their location and stand in a formation and wait. And we can see our Comanches on their patrol. And I sent a platoon with the guys there. Oh, there we go. Squad with the guys over there. And that's about it. Now, the last thing is you can see the friendly. Let's select them all so they get brighter. You can see all of the friendly high command units. The last thing we're going to look at today is what happens when your units under high command spot other groups of units. So we're actually going to do some combat with high command. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a group of enemies. We'll have some tanks and some infantry coming out from from this town, moving down here. And basically when... Well, you'll see what happens. All right, let the games begin. Let's see if I can manage this. Now we can see the enemy tanks right out there. So watch what happens when I switch to high. see the enemy units icons pop up under high command and that way when you go to the map you can give your units engagement orders to the enemy units As you can see at this point, it's like that. And that's because I started us, you know, directly across the field facing each other already. You can also see the status of your units under high command when you select them. 100%, 100%, 100%, 62%, which means they lost the tank. 100%, which means they still have all their tanks. 33%, which means he only has one tank. And I think I may have lost both of my Comanches already, which is bad, of course. Tank, half a click, north. And it looks like I lost the Bobcat. Yep. Oh, good hit on that tank, I think. tank crew, so I guess that tank got disabled. And you can see that tank just killed that infantry, which was one part of the tank crew, I think. And that was he was the last guy in his group and his symbol faded out. Six hundred meters northwest. Can't tell if that's friendly or enemy. I think that might be one of the tank crews, friendly tank crews, so I'll leave, I won't shoot them. And you can see... Man! 600 meters! That northwest! ...is enemy. Gotcha. So, I hope you guys enjoyed your first look at High Command, and the destruction that can be wrought through High Command, and, you know, ultimately, how Arma is supposed to really be played. Like, this is really the the intent behind the game of Arma, is controlling all these units in a big battle. And obviously, you, would, you wouldn't start across the field sh already shooting at the other unit. You would try to maneuver your units uh, to that town that's occupied by enemy forces intelligently, you know, like, move up behind this hill, put some of your tanks on this hill, move your infantry into this tree cover, and hold your aircraft in reserve, stuff like that. But for purposes of demonstration, we just started Civil War style across the field, already shooting at each other. And as you can see, lots of shit got blown up. And luckily I didn't get shot. So, so I hope you guys... Learned something about High Command today, and I hope you enjoyed, and as usual, thanks for watching. Reloading. He's under the stop sign, he's under the stop sign. 